Good morning. Uh, with us uh, today is Leonard from EPSA Capital. EPSA Bank. EPSA Bank. Not using capital anymore. EPSA Bank these yeah. days, yeah. We're going to be talking ETFs. We believe that you brought uh, three new products to market. You've got a host of ETFs already. Um, I think for our users, let's just talk a little bit about ETFs. What are they? What are the benefits? Uh, why should people include them in portfolio construction, etc.? Okay, uh, I mean, an ETF is essentially a listed unit trust. I think that's the easiest way to understand it. Mm. Um, it's a mutual fund, so it's a, it's a pool of assets that, uh, that various investors have, have a right to or, or, or can share in the economic performance of. Uh, where they differ from unit trust is that they are listed on the JSE, so they can trade intraday, you can buy them in the morning and sell them in the afternoon and, and realize the price difference there, whereas unit trusts tend to uh, price once a day. Um, currently, ETFs have to be index tracker funds. So, other than the commodity funds, which, which really the price performance of, of a commodity, um, ETFs must track an, an index of some sort, um, whether that's a benchmark index or, or a customized index. Um, and th because they are index based, there isn't any active management that takes place. So, we're not employing uh, very highly, uh, highly educated uh, people to, to sift through company financials. Um, we really just do and, and execute what the index tells us to do uh, in the portfolio. So typically an ETF is a lower cost investment vehicle than, a, than an actively managed fund. And I think that's probably uh, an ETF's greatest um, strength is, is the low cost in, uh, sure. scenario. So the alternative to that, if a, if a customer wanted to replicate the performance of an index, would be to go and buy the constituents. And obviously that's at an individual level, and if an index has 41 or 42 constituents, you'd be then paying execution fees on each one. Yes, you'd be paying okay. execution fees and importantly, you'd also be paying uh, security transfer tax. Oh, sure, which, yes. um, because ETFs are, are, are collective investment schemes that are exempt from securities transfer tax. Okay. And that's, that's a huge saving because that, that's a quarter of a percent. You know, uh, yeah. Okay, and then what happens in the background? So I, I come in and I look at this ETF and let's say it's, uh, it's a top 40, let's keep it simple. What, I buy that off the issuer yourselves what happens in the background? Do you go and replicate those underlying securities? Typically we'd have a market maker, so rather than creating and redeeming units um, whenever there's a buyer or a seller like you would do in a unit trust, uh, we have a, 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 in our case it is APSA Bank that does it, um, hold stock of the units and they hedge themselves appropriately so they're not taking any market risk. And then if someone wants to buy it, they just sell them some of the the, uh, the units that they have in stock in and they can one hedge. Yeah. Oh, okay. So typically the market maker will hold a sizable chunk of, of units and will sell those into the market as there's more demand. And when he runs out, then he'll go and create more units. All right, so in summary, ease of access, a single point of access for multiple constituents. Yes. Um, trades like an equity, so live, transparent pricing. Yes. Liquidity is always a concern. Uh, you know, the ease of being able to get in and out, but you've touched on that, there's a market maker, so the counterparty risks lie with the issuer. So as yes. a holder, my, my risk lies with the issuer. Yes, yeah. and that's highly regulated by the FSB. Okay. So we have, to, we have to submit to the FSB what our holdings are, and they make sure that you're not making uh, fictitious prices. So we, we, we heavily regulated. The ETFs are regulated by what's now the Financial Conduct, uh, Financial Services so Conduct Authority, it used to be the Financial Services Board, and also the JSE. So there's, um, there's a, double, a double set of regulation for ETFs. So l launching an ETF is, 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 quite a, is quite a business. It's, uh, it takes a long time. Um, and uh, and uh, you know, we've, got to, we've got to dot all the R's and cross all the T's before we can list one of these things. Thank you very much, Heather. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much, Heather. Cheers. Ah, thank you. Awesome. That's very nice. Cool.